In this video, we will learn the impact of the new standard IFRS 18 on the statement of cash flows. You are watching Accounting Zero to Hero. The International Accounting Standards Board or IESB published a new standard in April 2024 called IFRS 18 Presentation and Disclosure in Financial Statements. This new standard is expected to be effective for periods beginning on or after January 1, 2027. The primary goal of this standard is to replace IS-1, Presentation of Financial Statements. This includes changes in standards that improves communication in financial statements. The effectivity is a few years from the actual issuance of the new standard to give time for companies to adapt their internal processes and systems to the new requirements. However, earlier application is also permitted. In this video, although we will quickly discuss an overview of some of the changes brought about by IFRS 18, we will focus on its impact on IES 7 Statement of Cash Flows. Just to be clear, the requirements you know about IES 1 are not 100% overhauled because the purpose of this new standard is not to fix what is already working. For this reason, most of IS-1 are actually carried forward to IFRS 18 without any changes, save for the following major category of new requirements. Number 1. All income and expenses are now required to be classified into five categories in the income statement, with two new mandatory subtotals. Number 2. A new note to the financial statements is required showing certain non-GAAP measures. These are referred to in the standard as Management Defined Performance Measures or MPMs. And number three, there is an improved guidance on aggregation of information on the primary financial statements and notes. The main changes that impact the statement of cash flows is in item number one, so we will only be covering those. All the other changes from IFRS 18 will be covered in a future video. As mentioned before, one of the main changes brought about by IFRS 18 is a requirement to classify income and expenses into five mandatory classifications. Number one, operating category. We have the investing category, the financing category, the income taxes category, and the discontinued operations category. The first three are new classifications of income and expenses introduced in IFRS 18, but they may already be familiar to you because these are the same terms used in IES 7, Statement of Cash Flows, to classify different types of cash flows. Beware though that IES 7 and IFRS 18 do not have the same requirements and how to distinguish among the three activities, although some concepts might overlap. This means that when you are working with a cash flow statement, you have to refer to IES 7, and when you're working with the income statement, you need to refer to IFRS 18. According to IFRS 18, all income and expenses of the company should be classified into these five categories. Aside from this, the new standard mentions that two new mandatory subtotals should be presented in the Statement of Profit or Loss. The first mandatory subtotal is the operating profit or loss. The second one is the profit or loss before financing and income tax. Some companies may already be using this, so it may not be a big change for some companies, but now that they are mandatory, all companies should be presenting these two subtotals. The five categories of income and expenses and mandatory subtotals aim to reduce diversity in practice in preparing the statement of financial performance, because when all companies applying IFRS present their income statement in the consistent manner as prescribed, Users of financial statements can benefit from comparability across different entities. As an example, the new format of the income statement will look like this. You will notice that it is sequentially grouped into operating, investing, financing, income tax, and discontinued operations. And we are also showing the mandatory subtotals of operating profit and profit or loss before financing and income tax. IFRS 18 also acknowledges that in practice, it is not normally easy to just classify income and expenses into set categories because of diversity in the industries and operations of companies. This is why IFRS 18 introduced 
a few new concepts to guide certain companies in classifying their income and expenses. There are two types of companies affected. Number one, companies whose main business is investing in certain assets that generate revenues independent of other assets. For example, real estate companies investing in investment properties or investment entities whose subsidiaries are measured at fair value. The second type of company are companies whose main business is providing financing to customers, for example, banks and other financial institutions. The identification of main business activities is limited to these two types. Therefore, it is not necessary to identify all main business activities of the entity. It is only necessary to assess whether it engages in these two types of business activities, as there are particular classification requirements for entities with either of those specified main business activities, meaning that the income and expenses may be classified differently based on the standard. All other companies that do not belong to the two, they are called entities without a specified main business activity and they apply the general requirements of IFRS 18. So, what is the difference when companies have the main business activity of investing in assets and providing financing to customers? So, when companies fall under these types of companies, they would classify some of their investing and financing income and expenses under the operating category to reflect the nature of the business they are operating in. This makes a lot of sense. Since IFRS 18 would generally classify certain items, for example, interest income would be classified as investing category in the general requirements. But if your business is providing financing, such as if you are a bank or a financial institution, that interest income should actually be in the operating category instead of the invest category for all the other entities. This will be very relevant in our cash flow discussion later. Some examples of income and expenses under investing activities that are moved to the operating activities are as follows. Interest income of financial institutions, as what I have mentioned. Rental income of real estate companies. Unrealized gains on investments for investments accounted at fair value. Dividend income on equity investments. You can see that this requirement ensures that the income and expenses of main operations of certain companies are classified in the operating category instead of investing. An example of an expense under financing activities under general requirements that are moved to the operating activities when a company is providing financing to customers are interest expenses by banks and financial institutions especially if they are coming from customer deposits because these are directly related to the financing activity to customers where interest income are being generated. Okay, so now that you have an idea of the general changes brought about by IFRS 18, it is time to discuss the changes in the statement of cash flows because the things that we discussed before are heavily related to the changes in the statement of cash flows or IAS 7. As what I have mentioned, IFRS 18 aims to reduce the variability in practice in the presentation of the financial statements. Therefore, it is no surprise to see that the first thing it changes in the statement of cash flows is to remove the optionality of using either profit or loss before tax or profit or loss after tax when preparing operating activity cash flows under the indirect method. Under IFRS 18, there is a new requirement that changes IAS 7. It requires all entities to use the operating profit subtotal when preparing operating activity cash flows. It follows that due to IFRS 18, we need to use this, the operating profit, instead of the profit or loss before income tax or the profit or loss after income tax. It will simplify the preparation of cash flows and also align the presentation across all entities no matter the industry, thus improving comparability. The second major change in IS7 pertains to the following cash flow items. Interest received, interest paid, dividends received, dividends paid. You might recall that before the amendments brought about by IFRS 18, IS7 gives all entities an option where to classify these cash movements. In particular, 
interest received, and dividends received can be investing or operating. While interest paid and dividends paid can be financing or an operating activity. However, with IFRS 18, IAS 7 was amended to remove the optionality of classifying dividends paid. Now it is always a financing activity. For the other three, the treatment depends on whether the company has a specified main business activity of investing in assets and providing finance to customers or if they belong to the general requirements without the specified business activity. For now, it is simpler to discuss the general requirements first. So entities without a specific main business activity of investing in assets and providing finance to customers would classify dividends paid as a financing activity as discussed before. The other requirements are that we now remove the optionality of all the other things in a sense that dividends received are now always investing activity Interest received are now always investing activity and interest paid are always a financing activity. No more options. We discuss this first because most companies would follow these guidelines as most cases would not have a specified main business activity that are in scope of the requirements. Remember, you don't anymore have an option on these four categories of cash flows. Okay, so what happens if a company has a specified main business activity? And as a recap, what are the main business activities we're talking about? We're talking about those companies whose main business activity is investing in certain assets that generate revenues independent of other assets, and companies whose main business activity is providing financing to customers, for example, banks and other financial institutions. Okay, so what happens if you have a company, you're preparing a cash flows for a company with a main specified business activity that we identified before? So, number one, your dividends paid should still always be a financing activity. In short, there are no more options on dividends paid. It's always a financing activity whether you're in the general requirement or whether you're not. For dividends received, interest received, and interest paid, the treatment of the cash flows should be the same as the category it is included in the income statement. So, you should align the PNL classification. If your dividends received is in the investing category in the income statement, it should be in the investing activities in your cash flows, and so on and so forth. That is the main requirement of IFRS 18. This means that if the company has a specified main business activity of providing financing to customers, and the interests received has been classified as operating activity in the income statement, then it should also be operating activity in the statement of cash flows. A simple situation would show that if we have a company that has a main business activity of providing financing to customers, like a bank, the dividends paid would not appear in the income statement, of course, because it would appear in the statement of changes in equity, but it would appear as a financing activity in the cash flows. Dividends received would be an investing activity in the income statement and an investing activity in the cash flows because here we are assuming that they do not have the main business activity of investing in assets as a bank. And lastly, both interests received and interest paid are part of their day-to-day -day operations so that they are both operating activities in the income statement and in the cash flows. However, one important rule to remember for IFRS 18 is that there is a single category rule. This is an anticipation of how complicated this application will be in practice. This is only applicable for entities with main business activity of investing in assets and providing financing to customers. Which means that if interest received, interest paid, or dividends received are broken down into different classifications in the income statement, this is possible because could be for certain companies, you have total interest received, but some of them are coming from customers and some of them are coming from investments, wherein you don't really have a main business activity of investing in assets, so that you have a total interest received coming from different sources. The company should establish a policy to classify the whole amount of interest received, interest paid or dividends received into only one bucket in the cash flows. So even though it has been split in the income statement, there should only be one bucket or one category or one activity in the statement of cash flows. And that's the one thing to remember 
in terms of making cash flows for a more complicated company. I hope that you found this video super helpful when you're reviewing IFRS 18. See you in the future installments of Bite Sized Accounting Series. Thank you.